Okay. Okay. Who, who joined? Nares. Yeah, Nares. Okay. So again, uh, the same thing. Like Nares, you didn't you uh, get any invitation from me? No. So how how did you join now? Yeah, I just uh, got the message. Okay. Okay, so uh, please send me your email again. And I, I, I did. Okay. I sent it already. You might need to communicate beyond what you are teaching us. So, I don't know. What is the meaning of that? Chandan, are you here? Okay, no, okay. <clears throat> Uh, okay, Chandan asked that uh, if uh, Slack channel will help us. I do have a Slack channel, in fact, uh, yeah, but I, I was thinking of that way to add if, but I thought uh, Slack, more than Slack, WhatsApp will help us better because it is instant, right? Then again, we have to install another Slack app and, to, and we have all have mobile, so it will be better to communicate through WhatsApp uh, group rather than Slack uh, channel. Uh, we can definitely do that, um, but um, uh, WhatsApp is there anyway to, for the communication. Okay, but uh, I, I'll definitely introduce uh, Slack, how, how to integrate with the DevOps channel, how to integrate. Can you please, uh, okay, mute if you're not talking. Okay. Fine. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, see what we discussed last time. A bit uh, a recap of what we discussed last time. We discussed about uh, how to create a some some something coming. Actually, it's a bit irritating. Nares, can you please uh, unmute, uh, mute yourself? I muted you. Please. Uh, Yeah, is it okay now? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, a bit of recap: what we discussed last time, we uh, we created a repository on Git, in GitLab, right? And we created a demo application. And uh, this is a Spring Boot application we created. And uh, I have not, though I have created a uh, pipeline here, but I have not spoken about it. How to create a pipeline? We'll discuss that. Uh, but at least the base is how to um, create a uh, ru <clears throat> runner on AWS. That's what we have seen last time. Did you see that? How the runner can be registered with GitLab server? That, that we saw already, right? So, but we have not executed that clearly. Uh, we just added it to the GitLab uh, server so that it can all the jobs related to the pipeline can be executed in the GitLab runner. That's what we saw. But actually, if you want to execute that, what are the things necessary? So because this is a program which has obviously some dependency on some of the languages, because this is a Java language application which we created, like Spring Boot, right? So, so this is a Spring Boot application. That means it, it needs Java. It, it, to build it, obviously we need it, uh, we need a Maven to be implemented. And also to run it, if you want to install Docker, that is a different thing. But at least we need Maven and Java for this program to run, right? So if we don't have that installed in the GitLab runner, then the GitLab runner cannot execute the job properly. Then uh, it will complain that it failed, right? So for that, we have to uh, we have seen last time how to create, but for our demo purpose or for our work purpose, uh, I think if you all remember, 
I said you once how to create a VM in, in your laptop itself, right? I, I think I, I said it, how to create a virtual machine in your own laptop so that every time to run a uh, GitLab runner, you don't have to log into cloud and because you already know it, it is not a big deal now just to create a VM inside the cloud. It is the same thing, whether it is in the cloud or it is in the in your local laptop, it will be the basically the concepts will be the same, right? So today let's do that quickly. How to create a VM? Because I, I if I am to go to cloud, run it, and that obviously will do it. But how you can do it in your local laptop? Let's see that first. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a VM inside my in my laptop using some virtualization technology. There are multiple ways you can create, depends up completely on you. So, and if you have a Windows laptop, you can have two things, um, in at least three, three way you can create. One is the virtual box, which I said last time, and another is the uh, VM uh, workstation, so VMware workstation. So that also you can, there is a, uh, you can download that's, uh, Workstation is not free, but uh, there is a VMware player which you can create some VMs there that is free. So that, that also you can do it. So uh, the preference is up to you. So uh, first we'll create that. Then I'll also tell you how to install Java in a Linux system. I am sure a lot of, uh, all of you maybe, uh, will be very familiar with uh, installing uh, Java on Windows, right? Just click, click, click. But you don't have to do a lot of things. But when it comes to a server where you, there is no uh, GUI or the, there is no graphical user interface where you have to use execute commands and all, how to install Java there? And then how to install Maven also. So these are the things we're going to learn today. And also then what we'll do is we'll add, we'll create that VM so this is the thing what we'll do. We'll create a virtual machine locally. We'll install Java in that. We'll install Maven in that. Then we'll register that VM as a GitLab runner. And then we'll execute our pipeline. Okay, here, the pipeline what we'll execute. And once we run that, we see that the pipeline runs in that local GitLab runner. Okay, so that's what we'll see. Also, if time permits, then what we'll see is we'll introduce the Docker container. So how same thing we can achieve. So I'll take stage one step at a time, as I said. First in a VM, how we can do that. Then we'll see what are the complications we get if you use a VM, then how we can overcome, overcome those using containers or how easy it becomes if you're using containers. That also we'll see. And also I'll introduce uh, very fundamental things of containers. I have created some slides here. Uh, so these three slides also I'll explain. Uh, what are the, these and how the physical system, how the application works in a VM, how it works and in a container how it's. So these are the fundamentals of containers. So I'll cover this, okay? So uh, if you have a laptop in front of you, I uh, expect you to do the same thing with me. I expect you have Windows laptop, right? So I'll let me com communicate to my Windows laptop here. This is my Windows laptop. Sorry, this is my Windows machine actually. It's a desktop, it's not a laptop. So you, you can do that uh, in a laptop too. So, I just communicated and now it is not communicating to my Windows laptop, Windows machine, I don't know why. Let me quickly check this, I'll come back.
uh, yes, my desktop is running. I don't know why it's not connecting. I'll stop sharing. Let me quickly see. Before the meeting started, I saw it was communicating, but now it is just stuck here. I don't know. I'll restart the machine and come back again. Okay, sorry, sorry about uh, that. By the way, it is Windows, so sometimes Windows restart helps. <laughs> we restart the Windows machine and a lot of problem will be solved. But by the way, so um, I, first day, I think we, uh, let me do it here also, it will be the same thing. So uh, virtual box. So in share the screen, okay. So I think uh, we, we saw that uh, how to install VirtualBox last time, right? So this is uh, on the my Mac, but in Windows, it should be the same uh, feature, I think. So uh, let me see if still I'm getting it. Okay, came up. So I think we didn't cover uh how to install this virtual box. Yes, right, so we did that. So directly I'll go and do I have it? What is the virtual box? It was here. Maybe I remove it. Okay. So I'll just quickly I'll go. It will take me two minutes just to, to install it. So just I downloaded already, it was already downloaded and I am installing in my, normally I work in my Mac, so it is not there. So anyway, it is good that now it is installed. Okay, so that, okay. So this is VirtualBox. It is the same thing. Like if you see, the look and feel is once you install, same thing. So because this is, I'm more comfortable here, I'll do it here, okay. <clears throat> So when you start, uh, another thing is, uh, anybody downloaded the CentOS, CentOS? Linux operating system. So download CentOS. So if you have not, please do that. And you can write this one, CentOS Linux DBD ISO. So if you go here, centos.org slash download, you can find this link and download this and you can download the latest one and don't download the eight, CentOS eight, you download the CentOS seven, which is uh, the big most stable. So eight is still, uh, many people don't use it. Okay, so we can um, do in fact in, in Google CentOS seven, okay. Actually, sir, I have the CentOS 6.9. Uh, no, uh, please download the 7. 6 is too old. 
Okay. Nobody works on the so it's not about working. Is it dependent on the software that you are using? No, no, it is not. But uh, eight is too advanced. A lot of uh, experimental features are there, which we don't want. At the same time, six is too old. So okay. seven uh, normally, uh, I think we should do that. Okay. So download. If we go here. Actually, sure. For Mac, we don't need to do it, or we have to do it. No, for Mac, every everybody. It. Okay. So because we are going to install another VM, okay? okay. We have to create another VM. So stream release, uh, download, more download choices, okay? Browser is just sold. So here, if you go, this is eight. Um, CentOS Linux version seven, right? This one is seven. So here, minimal package. Um, okay, sorry to um, pause you again. Uh, can you go back again and uh, show me that uh, how did you land in this? Uh, what I do is I'll, I'll just put in the chat, okay? Uh, so, but uh, you can do this, but otherwise you go this. More download choices, okay? Here, more download choice. Okay, 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 got you. And seven, and um, then you can download it. And but uh, okay, where's the link? Because this is mirrors, okay? Here, the mirrors, yes, seven dot eight, right? So you can download anyone, other mirror or whatever. So it is version seven release. So you can see this and you can see the download the minimal. Okay. So sent x86. This is x64. We should download. Uh, yeah, this is x68, 62,000 live carry minimal 2003 ISO. Okay. Download this one. CentOS 7 x86 underscore 64 minimal 2003. So this is minimal. That means it will be very few packages will be there, which we want actually. We don't want every, everything should be there. Okay. So I, I can, I have downloaded already this one. I have a folder called ISO where I, I can to save it. So once this will be taking, it is one gig exactly, one gig. So if you want the complete package, if you see this one, 72003 is 4.5 gig. And latest is actually, this is 21. Okay, 21.4 is the, is, it was released actually. So it is very latest. And uh, you can download this. And in, once you download this ISO image, So let it be download. And what you do is file new. You you okay here you can do virtual machine new cloud VM. This is a bit different. Uh, more meeting with you. Uh, so who is not mute again? Okay. <clears throat> I think this is giving me trouble. The 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 screen is not enough for with uh, <laughs> Zoom, it is giving me trouble. I don't know how to operate it now. It is actually, we, uh, there is, is, I'm sorry, I the, my screen is not enough. I cannot see the buttons like, okay, here. Yeah. So I, I'll minimize it now with the screen, maybe this will be good. Okay, so here if you go, there is a add or new. There are two buttons are there, just click the new. Okay, new operating system. Let me open it again so that it will be clear. Okay, 
So go to virtual box. Again, there it is. Then click new. Just maybe if what you will send OS seven. Just like maybe you can name it as base image. So what I'm to do is why I call it base images. I will always clone from this machine. I'll create this and I don't have to install again and again, always. I'll keep this as my base and I'll clone any anytime I require a new VM, I'll clone from this VM. So it will work for me as a template. Okay. So maybe that's why I named it any base image or template. Okay. Then select uh, Linux. And here you can select the Red Hat 64. Okay. And uh, I believe I downloaded it already. So it is it is downloaded. Okay. This is the image. So keep it there. Now continue. And here, how much VM you want to give, how the VM which you are going to create, how much memory it depends upon again you. If you have a 8 gig RAM, okay, in your uh, local laptop, you can maybe you can give up to 4 M 4 gig of RAM, 4096. Okay, or you, you can give up to 2, 2 also for the same 2048. Also at your 1 gig, it will cry. <laughs> But still, it will run. Okay, it it will take some time because one gig is too less. Uh, but still, you can do it. If you have a, a four gig uh, machine, four laptop has having four gig, obviously, then don't give two gig. Give only maybe one one zero two four. Still, it will run. But it will take some time to install all, all the packages. So because I have got a fairly large amount of memory, so I, what I'll give is uh, because I want to make it faster. So I'll give eight gig of RAM. Okay. Continue and create a. So you have create a virtual hard disk now. Okay. Create. Then it will ask VDI. VG, don't worry about everything. Just take with the default VDI. Continue. And select dynamically allocated. It's always good. Otherwise, what will happen is if we call fixed size. Then it will take whatever size we allocate now, it will take all the uh, like a disk space and it will allocate to the VM. So you will be kind of leave with very less space in your uh, hard disk, in your laptop hard disk. So don't do that. Just create dynamic allocated and continue. So now this will give a path where the VDI, there will be a VDI file dot VDI, okay? It will be created, and how you can do that is you you can control this uh, one also like where it will be created by default. If you see here, this the path. So it is like my home directory, VirtualBox VMs, sent OS, base image. You can change it if you want, but keep the default for the time being. In the Windows machine, it will be created in your home directory. Okay, when you do it it will be created in your home directory. Like uh, users, um, users, then your name, then in that there will be a folder called VirtualBox VMs, okay? Then the important is how much hard disk space you want to give the virtual machine. Here you can check it. So I want to give 256 because I want it fairly large, kind of 256. Or you can give even 100 gig. Let's for our, uh, it will be 100 gigs would be fine for our 100 gig. Okay. And because I have given it a dynamically allocated, so it won't take 100 gig from your desk actually. This is MB, sorry. I This would be gig, GB, not MB because this will act as the hard disk for the VM, okay? So I gave 95 or 105 and make it just create it. 
Okay. Now you see here. Would it pull from like C drive or the other drive? You can keep anywhere you want. Okay. It doesn't matter. You you keep whatever. Uh, normally it will be in the C drive. But if you are don't if you don't want your C drive to be kind of um, you know filled up, you can change it to D drive always. Okay. And how to do that is I'll show you here. So in this, if you one minute. Here it's too low actually, even if I cannot see. Miss in new, if you do it here, same thing it will appear. You, you cannot see it also because I'm getting a remote desktop from Windows. It is the, you know, the fonts are too low. You cannot see it. So uh, here, if you go machine and uh, file and preference, you can actually change the folder where it will be created. Okay. Here, file and go to preference. Here, other. Once you place other, then if, if you can choose the D drive and create a folder and select it. Thank okay. You. Yeah. So that's uh, in Windows. So I'll go back. So same thing here. Uh, file and here it is preference. And I can change it always, wherever I want to do. Okay, so now this one is created. Okay, now what happens is I created a physical machine which is having rather virtual hardware. Uh, okay, I created a virtual machine with virtual hardware, not physical machine. I created a virtual machine with physical, uh, with virtual memory, virtual processor, virtual disk, everything I created, right? So you can see also settings if you select this and go to settings you can see what you have created you can system you see i have given eight gig of ram to this and how many processor i have given one processor to this and storage i have created a storage which is of 105 gig that's all we need actually and another important thing is networking okay so if you see here there are multiple network options so for the understanding and simplicity, what you do is create a bridge network, okay? In, by default, it will be NAT, okay? But when you have installed it clearly, then it will be bridge network. NAT should be fine also if you don't want to do it, but I want a particular uh, different IP for different VMs. That's why I want all your IP addresses, whatever you get, should be controlled by your router. Okay. So, and that will be done only when you select the bridge adapter. Okay. Consider uh, sure what is the difference between like a, a net uh, and a bridge adapter? So, NAT will be, it will, NAT will share your computer's network. Okay. Okay. It will uh, not, it will have IP address, obviously, but to the outside world, it will be your computer IP address, it will be communicating through. Whereas if you select bridge network, bridge adapter, it will have its own IP address from the router. It will behave as if as it is behave as a separate virtual machine from your laptop. Your laptop will have a separate IP address and your VM also will have a separate IP address. Okay. 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 So select, it is better to select, uh, because I want it should be totally independent of the, uh, your laptop. So select bridge adapter and click OK. Okay, another thing, once you earn the same thing is, then like push your uh, drive. I also image nothing but, when you want to install the operating system, we use to get a disk, right? So I also image is nothing but a virtual disk where you want to, your operating system is there and you want to install it. So what you do is go to storage and if you see here, it will be empty. Controller ID, it will be empty, right? That means you, you have not pushed the virtual disk, which is having the operating system. Now, select empty and if you see here, 
if you click this there is a round uh, circle here there is a circle of and symbol of a disk so just click that right and choose a disk file here it is there choose a disk file click it and then it will wherever you have saved the iso image just which we downloaded if you see this one i just downloaded and selected the iso image okay and okay now that means i have pushed physical like a, in a uh, hardware machine we push the disk before installing it right so we just now push the disk which is a virtual disk iso image is nothing but a virtual disk now after you do that just click start once you start it then okay here there is another way also you can do it before that i don't know why he didn't take it he, it is telling that docker uh, iso or something but here it is again asking me to give the virtual optical disk file i don't know why he didn't take me but uh, here also the one i want to create this one you see because there are multiple actually here so possibly it, didn't, it could not take it because i have already uh, selected many uh, iso images so here if you click this one which we just downloaded and if it is giving that just start it and now it is booting from the iso image actually and just install install Uh, I can you go back uh, one step behind uh, on the ISO image uh, that you are looking at? Um, because okay, it started. I cannot really go back, but I can. Um, okay, so I I can do that again. One minute, let me let me stop it then. Uh, the ISO image is that. Uh, which one is actually actually uh, I'm lost. I mean, is that the, the the CentOS that you downloaded or that is a different? The one, did you download it? Yeah, I did. Okay, so I don't know why yeah. my mouse is stuck inside the VM. So that's a, I don't know. It's not coming out why, I don't know why. It is, that's why it's something open source, that's the problem already. Virtual box is open source, so I don't know. Come on. It is not responding. Because possibly I'm having multiple. Huh. I, okay, you may have that issue also because it's another virtual machine, right? So, there is, so it is normally command and option in the Mac, but in, in your Windows, it would be actually the right uh, uh, control and shift, I believe. If you push it, it should come out. But here it is not coming out actually for me. Yeah, now it came out. <laughs> Let me do that again. Power off the virtual machine. Okay, so I'll go back. Where, um, Sanjit, what do you ask? Uh, just show me the steps that you allocated okay. the. Uh, uh, this is settings, storage, and this one, right? So if you click here, you can select the virtual disk, which you just downloaded, and click OK. And just then, once you select it, just start it. And then it will come to install. Uh, it is too small, actually. So just press, press install center 7. And it will start installing. And here. You can, once you do that, it is checking the disk. You can escape it. Press escape it to move ahead. Okay. So I'll just quickly go through this so that maybe you can uh, see it um, 
in the recording okay because we don't have to waste time here so uh, we can revisit again so here it is fairly simple welcome to saint us go continue um, forgive me this um, i don't know in mac it comes with very small font uh, i believe i can increase the font but let me check again it is stuck come on it is stuck inside like it's not coming out um, by default the auto capture would be on so you would no you that's know. right but it should come out it it normally uh, command options would coming out see it is not coming out so uh, for windows how i go out of it is like i just click on the top top bar of it no. and then i'm out no you cannot how you can click top bar when you cannot come out because no, no, they would, they windows, would it is windows there are uh, the control right control okay and uh, shift i believe so if you press that it will automatically come out so it is in the laptop it is command option yeah now it came sometimes it is now you can okay now i am in my base machine okay but once we click inside you to come out it is called the uh, what is the special key okay the the host key it is normally called the host key okay so here you can see the host key is nothing but what is the host key machine okay take the snapshot host t and session information uh, pause okay so you can see what is your host key okay input device okay anyway so let me see if i can increase the font there is no way i can increase here the font okay so uh, let's see if you can so there is a continue button here i just click it okay selecting english and english in this page this is only this is the only one more page which we should know that's all date and time it should be taken automatic and installation destination here you can select the hard disk which will be by default selected and check it and done click done and it will be automatically selected here then network host name okay network host name click and make it on here okay there will be ethernet and it will automatically get ip address from your router so you can see here it is my 192.168.1.120 so it is got it right and then you click also there will be right side bottom there is a configure click this one and go to general here and click that is automatically connect to this network when it is available so i click it here okay and that's all i have to do and ip setting which is this selected is automatic that's all and there is a button here called save and come out and then here done and you see every other things all are almost selected and software selection is minimal install okay that's all once you select this space and you are done almost then begin installation click then in this it is started already in sling so it is one page only nothing big deal so now set the root password here click the root password and whatever you want to give the password you can give here okay normally uh, for the immediate you don't give a strong password because it is anyway inside your home inside your laptop nobody is going to access unless you are your laptop is open right so you can i normally for simplicity i give abc123 just for simplicity okay because uh, later when i need i can change it but for the timing i give a simple one it will ask if it is a simple password it will confirm it will ask do you want to keep the simple it will ask if you click twice it will be taken then another user always you can create instead of just root user you can create a normal user and you can give here 
a normal username, your own name, so that username I automatically PNAC is taken. And here there is something called make this user administrator. Click it. So that once you click it, PNAC also will be the system administrator for this virtual machine. Okay, then create a password, same, I keep the normally all the root and uh, the administrator, I keep the same password and give it. Now done and done. So you see here, the root password is set and administrator PNAC will be created. That's all, you don't have to do anything. That if you finish this, it will quickly create, depends upon your uh, speed of your uh, laptop. And I think in my mission, it will be immediately in two minutes, it will be created. So that's, that's all about creating a VM. And anytime, once this is created, you just open it, open the virtual machine and start running it. Instead of logging every time to cloud, to work on it in a DevOps environment, because we are not, uh, we're learning cloud. When you're learning cloud, obviously you log into cloud, but when you want to work in a DevOps environment, why to again waste time to log into cloud? Because it's learning, right? Obviously when in a practical um, um, workable environment, obviously you do in the cloud. But for learning, as we're learning, so it is better to have a VM, which is local. <clears throat> And you can create like this multiple. I'll show you now how to create multiple VMs, okay? okay? I'll create at least three, four VMs from here. Once you install, you can create whatever your, if you have 16 gig of RAM in your laptop, I believe you can create 16 VMs also, one gig each, and you can run all at a time. I have tested when I had 16 gig RAM, I tested in fact 32 VMs I run 512 each. 512 RAM I gave to each machine, I was on 32 VMs at a time. Okay, one by one I started all the VMs and obviously my laptop was completely loaded with 100% utilization of memory, 100% almost 80% utilization of memory and 80, almost 80-90% of utilization of my uh, processor, but well, I could still run 32 VMs. Now also in this machine I can run maybe 64 VMs with 512 uh, gig of uh, RAM each and giving a fraction of uh, processor power, right? So that's up to you and your uh, processing power of your laptop. So there is no limit, but, but obviously limit is, limitation is by the physical limitation. So that means how much physical memory you have, it depends on that. Otherwise, if somebody asks like how many VMs you can create, so there is no right answer, there's no wrong answer. Why? Because it depends upon your physical capacity. How much memory you have got in a machine. That is called sizing. In, 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 obviously now we are in talking in a cloud world, so nobody does the sizing of the virtual machine. But previously when we were talking about virtualization, we we're talking about uh, private cloud, we used to do the sizing of the main machine, main physical machine, what will be the size of it, that means what, how many processor we need, how much memory we need, how much storage we need, how many network ports we need. All those should be sized previously to buy the server. But now obviously in the cloud world, we don't need it. We simple go and create number of VMs we want, number of, so it's unlimited storage, unlimited capacity. But in a physical world, obviously it is limited, right? So here in our machine, okay, now it is done. So. Well, it is installed and just there will be a reboot button will be there just click reboot and we are done that's all it is OS is installed okay so and you enter it um, this is running okay <clears throat> now you see here localhost login okay so after that, you can give your username which you created and the password, and we are good. I am able to log in here. It is too small. I'm sorry. Uh, that is the uh, problem of 
VoiceBox in uh, Mac. Uh, I, I need to change the, some of the configuration uh, inside the VoiceBox to make it bigger, but I, I don't have, we don't have time for that now. But that, that's all uh, to install it again. So I'll, I'll switch to a already installed operating system. So, but um, the first thing we, we should do is, uh, it's very minimal, okay? To enlarge it, right? Uh, next to the left. No, it, even if you enlarge it, it won't enlarge, okay? Because that's the size of uh, the operating system for the time being. So we have to do some, change some of the basic thing and uh, we have to install some drivers, display drivers, because it's a very small one, right? So we, we, we it, will, it will not just lie like that if you, so we need some drivers. So that, that's why like, um, it is my again, uh, my pointer is stuck. It is my laptop problem or what? I don't know. It should normally it is should not happen this way. Sorry. What happened? This really behaving very no, I I, I don't have my mouse. I don't have my <laughs> anywhere it's not visible, you know. Actually, Zoom could be a <coughs> could be a culprit. Maybe yeah. So, um, so what what you do is okay. And and now I cannot bring it back and to stop in this stop sharing and stop Zoom. Okay. Can you do? Uh, I think if you do. Control okay. Uh, let Let's not worry about it. Uh, so let me. Uh, le, le, we, we, okay. So what do we do is first thing. If you see here, if config will not work. Okay. If config command will not work. So first thing is you install the net tools package sudo yum install net hyphen tools okay you install this and it is asking me the password and you do that it will directly first download the network tools which is important for us to know the ip address okay and Push yes, so that yes. Now if config will work, if config minus a, if you see, it is 192.168.1.128. 120, not 28, 120, okay? So now we got the IP. I have actually a solution. Even if I, now, because once I get the IP, I don't really care what is the font size of this. I'll have to access this remotely. But my, my, should come out first. I think maybe the culprit is really zoom because normally it should come out. Command option, it should come out. Hmm. I am really stuck here. Okay, I don't know how to do it. Now I, okay, sorry. I have to physically down my laptop, then I'll, whole thing will be gone, gone. Whole recording will be gone. I don't know, I cannot physically make. A punch, can you do stop. that? Okay, okay, stop sir. I, I used my, okay, MacBook. There is something now. Uh, the sharing was trouble actually it was giving the trouble some way yep now i stop the sharing and now it is i believe i can do it can you hear me yes yeah we can okay so yes that that zoom is actually sharing is giving us the, us the trouble so let me share the screen only let's see can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. Only I'm, I'm, I'm not sharing my whole desktop, I'm sharing only that screen. So now you can see here, 
that, that's what it is and it is the ip address now what i do is share the screen i do an ssh rather than joining to the vm what i'll do is i'll create i'll join just uh, i'll do a ssh from my local terminal okay ssh Client at the rate one ninety two one sixty eight dot one dot one twenty. See here, right? Now I am logged into the VM. Now anything I want to do, I can do. So that like this is now I am logging in from my laptop, and you can do the same thing with using Party. In, if you are a Windows user, use Putty and give the username as whatever name you have given and the IP address. And like you are logging into a cloud, upper a cloud machine, same way you can log in here. And after that, everything remains the same, whether it is a cloud virtual machine or in your laptop. Everything, every other thing remains the same. Okay. So if I exit it, I go back here now. And even if what I do is quickly just to show you here, I, I stop it first. Sudo init zero so that I stopped. You see the, here the virtual machine stopped. Now, the best way to do is suppose you want to don't use this machine actually. I will suggest though don't, don't use this machine. What you do is right click here and clone it if you want to do it because this is a base machine you don't want to corrupt it if anything gone wrong you whole work you have to do it again right so first you can take a snapshot of this here click it and here if you just take here like uh, there, there is a snapshot button is here and snapshot window in fact uh, yeah actually this sharing is really giving me trouble my i cannot see the whole screen so you go to tools okay and here you see this is uh, welcome tools machine or you can even if right click i believe okay if you right click here snapshot will be there no here okay you see here click and there is option called snapshots so if you go here there is a camera button here like camera and just click it and a snapshot will be taken you can name it snapshot one and what the meaning of snapshot is if anything gone wrong to this particular vm you can re return back to your where current state okay which is pretty much like a new machine so you can always return back so i i name it new install with net tools installed so just so that if anything go suppose i install number of you know packages later and something i did wrong that means whole operating system now because I'm not a in a, you all are obviously not administrator you did something wrong and you don't know how to fix it so better then let's go back so then what you have to do either you can delete the whole operating system and um, create, create an instead of that what you do is go to snapshot okay here if you go to snapshot that is called snapshot snapshot manager okay so here you see here this is the snapshot manager and this is the current state if you check here and here you can revert back actually restore if you click here there's a button called restore so if you just click this it will go back to a known state where you know that you can create multiple snapshots always 
so you know that where you want to go back okay so that is the snapshot is nothing but current state of the machine is saved for you so that if anything goes you can return back okay so and that and that's an, one thing second thing is clone it clone and you can now from the base image that's why i named it base image i called it maybe gitlab runner okay i created new vm from that i cloned it gitlab runner and select full clone not the linked clone there will be two options so create full clone and clone GitLab it runner. okay one minute what up Git you have you have a gitlab runner already okay so you can just name it to one maybe okay clone okay so it now it is cloned so here this this machine is instantly created so i am not touching the base image i am only cloning from here so if i need another i just clone it and i give some other name maybe something gitlab runner 2 or whatever or jenkins you want to create tomorrow you can maybe jenkins 1 and clone it okay or you want to even if create a clusters of machine okay let me delete a lot of things now remove so i, I you see i have like kubernetes cluster i have created here let's say master 1 master 2 worker 1 worker 2 so i can i even if i can create a kubernetes cluster local okay so you you can create depends upon your um, um missing capacity you can create number of vms and you can work without going to the cloud for um, this is good for devops professionals just to learn if you want to know how many and also cloud gives no more than 3 right you cannot create more than 3 vms so here you can create n number of vms and you test whatever you want you configure it and do it right so uh, let's let's work on this uh, gitlab runner okay as we have already created it so let's start working and install java inside it okay so let me start it so once i go inside if i am not stop if they don't stop sharing it is not coming out the strange problem okay now for the same thing what i'll do is if the ip address i know is it now different normally it comes the same uh, no it will be different because i cloned it um okay so now the ip address is 121 actually okay let me say again so sorry pantleshar uh the local host login name that is the user id and password which you gave during creation of the virtual machine right sorry local host yeah local host login we don't need to log in local host is your actually laptop not the va uh, okay so every system is called local host to inside it okay so oh, did i didn't share sorry okay this is sharing giving you trouble actually so if you see here every system is this is when i create a new cell uh, you know this is uh, depends upon your machine it is named so any linux system or uh, uh, in, um, unix system you just create new by default it will be local host that means it is in, it is local host is inside the vm but outside it won't be uh, visible okay so if you want to log in if you want to log in to from outside you have to give obviously the ip address that is ssh 
then 192.168.1.121. Okay. So now I'm, you see, this is again became localhost because, but I'm, if you see here, if config, the IP address is 121, okay? Whereas my, my if I see here, this is my local machine. If IP address is different. Yeah. Okay. This is a lot of, because I have running a lot of VMs. So a <laughs> lot of IP address and containers are running. So a lot of IP address will be there anyway, but it is, this is the local host as always address is 127.0.0.1. But if you see, this is uh, my, okay, this is some of the base network, then my, um, this is my VBOX and this is my, again, uh, VBOX network and what, what else? My Wi-Fi network is, what is that? This one is my Wi-Fi network, EM0. Okay, so 37. So anyway, so uh, inside the VM, you have to execute the command if config minus a to know its IP address. And from outside the, from your local laptop, use that IP address to log in to that machine. Okay. So once you do that, it is, you can visualize it as a, now this is the machine, but I'm logging in from my command from here. I'm not going to the VM. It is like directly going to the VM and this is logging in. The advantage of this is you cannot copy paste any command here. Okay. Inside the virtual box dashboard, this is a virtual box dashboard or the console. You cannot copy paste any command here, but whereas you could do SSH, I can copy paste commands and execute it. That's the advantage of, okay. Yeah, but but if you want to go to the GitLab runner one over there, what should be the user ID and password? Whatever during creation you created, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's not taking actually. Okay. So I created like T Nayak. I I created T Nayak and ABC one two three. So you can use the same thing. I I did the same thing. In fact, yeah, somehow I missed my password. I did something wrong. Okay, so like this SSH T Nayak at the rate, right? So IP and I gave my password. That's all. Now the same thing, and uh, like we we did last time. Just what we need to do is uh, let's quickly update it. sudo yum update minus y. Okay. Updating the packages. So actually, it is running here in this machine. Okay, this command. I'm executing from my laptop, but actually because I have SSH, um, like uh, remote SSH, so this is actually running inside this, okay? Then what we'll do is we'll let's, uh, I have already created the, I, I'll delete that now. Uh, let me run or I have a runner. I have a runner, let me remove the runner and I'll create it again. This one I'll make as the runner. Before that, what I'll do is let's install Java. Okay. And the best way to uh, in easily, I have to make it easier. Uh, you uh, obviously you can install. Oracle JDK will be tough here to install because it is uh, what? The tough means there is obviously not tough but we have to some way download first to our local laptop. Then we have to upload that installer to here, right? Because it's not GUI that from there we can go and log in. Previously, it when login, you couldn't, you don't need to log in. It was fairly easy to download to a VM which does not have a GUI. But now with the command prompt only, it becomes difficult a bit. So what do we do is, you can go and okay, there is another good way of communicating to it. If you want to um, upload some of the files to this, what you will do? 
filezilla is a good way have you have you used filezilla win recipe also filezilla win recipe both yep yeah or or uh, win win um, what is that win is no win uh, win scp yeah win scp is also a good one so i i i am familiar with, like i am good with uh, filezilla so uh, l just quickly i'll tell you how to do it there's my filezilla Okay, so here um, you we just can give the same thing like post one ninety two one sixty eight dot one dot one twenty one and username is Vinayak and password and port is twenty two and we connect. Okay, so this is connected. So now if I have to change anything, I do. Uh, you download and upload to this machine. So what I'll do is quickly you can download the JVM, which I believe we have downloaded already. You can upload it here and install it. Or if you want to use the open JDK, simple sudo yum install open JDK Java one dot 11 no okay one minute so yum to see what is available there is a command called yum list and grape jdk let's see what are the grapes <clears throat> so this is the uh, these are the open jdk available so you can install any one. So we'll uh, mail, let's install a quickly one. I, I don't want to take more time downloading again the Oracle. I think we discussed that initially sometimes. So I'll quickly install open JDK here. Sudo yum install. This one this is the package. Right? So what I'm doing is sudo yum install open Java 11 open JDK Debra. This one I'm going to install. Okay, so this is installing the Java and um, the development kit of Java, Open JDK. We'll do Oracle also, Oracle Java if uh, we need, uh, but let's see, Java C. Yes, so now executing Java C. So now let's install Maven. Uh, to download the latest Maven, what you do is go to Google and Maven download. So here, go to and see what is the latest. Latest, check the binary. This is the latest, 363 bin, right? Right click, copy the link address and do a wget. This is the kind of download command from the command prompt. wget and control V will give directly the link where you can do it down directly downloading. You see this wget is the command. Because okay, you, because this is a fresh install, I believe wget may not count. Yes, right. So what you do is quickly sudo yum install wget and y. So now it will execute. So this will download the Maven file. Okay, now you see here. Apache Maven, this bin.tad.gz is downloaded. So what I'm going to do is untar it first. Tab. Okay, this is done. And I will move it to a directory called user lib because I want this is this directory particularly it is only one user if you want all the users of the vm to be able to use it you have to take it from your home directory because this is this directory home class 
your username is user specific directory you don't want to keep like java it should be system wide maven it should be system wide not user specific for applications right so i'll move this move mv sudo first sudo move apache this one to user local i want to take here and go to them user local and you see this is apache maven is here so because i don't want to create a like, you know, all the so big directory either we can change the directory name or we can create a link simple in linux link minus s the source apache then i'll give is maven 3.6.3 sudo okay you see here there is a link created and if i see the less maven it is actually uh, giving the same whatever inside okay ls maybe you wouldn't understand this that means what i am doing is this is actually same as this one both are same in it is a linux and the unix concept creating a link one file to another so i created a link now if i go to either i go to apache so it is the you see the same and or i go to maven see if you see ls both are same you see this content and this content both are same i created just a link so that it becomes easier i don't have to always refer to something called apache and all even it right so now let's create a path so that my system commands will be executed mvn if i go to um, suppose cd mvn does it found no command not found so i have to give the system the path of the maven installation which is user slash local slash maven 363 and how to do that is sudo uh, okay first i'll go to there is a file called etc profile dot d and here if you see a number of ss files are there I'm a bit faster because obviously I have to finish it. It's already 8.55. So uh, here sudo vi maven dot sh. Sorry, sudo vi. And here I can, I have to give all the path to different, different. Okay, so what I do is um export path equal to and remember it's important to give the value of path first if you miss this you all your commands will not work because it will overwrite the existing path colon then user <clears throat> and I need to make it simple. Local maven three dot six dot three slash bin. Okay, this is the complete path of maven. Okay, so and you just exit it and again re login that will be taken care of and the end you see this now it will be executed so will failure but it it understood what is the mvn is i gave the path okay i will repeat what i did is this is important a bit uh, how to set the path so go to etc directory and call profile dot b and here if you see i created file maven.sh and i did export path equal to dollar path the, the, this means it is the existing path it should take 
it should not omit the existing part okay that if you miss this particular thing all other commands will not work only maven will work means it will overroute uh, like override all the path and it is only adding the maven path so you this is important and you must do it dollar path colon then the whole path of the bin directory that's all now with this is done let's now the our uh, system is ready in um, uh, java is uh, installed java c let's see uh, java is executing mbn is uh, we saw already executing and we are good so obviously we need to set a java path but because i am to be faster and to i possibly will do that next but i want to finish this today so now let's go back quickly uh, i'll copy from my previous the how to install gitlab runner this is the command i just copy it and directly i'll execute it okay and cd and this is going to install the required packages for gitlab runner and it's asking me password it is installing some of the dependent dependent whatever uh, required packages and now second is run gitlab uh, yum gitlab runner and next is just register and sudo start start it <clears throat> okay start and then enable it also so that any restart will make it to automatically start it enable the service and it is now installed now, now let's register it okay sudo gitlab register so now it is asking where obviously this is the one we have to give which is by default now we get the token from the gitlab and the token is here copy it right this is i want to know tell it again how to get the token go to the project whatever the project you and go to settings ci cd then in that expand the runner and here you will find there is something called use the following registration token copy it and paste it here and this is local host local domain because it will um, the current one but you can give any name okay so what i'm doing is a my home home my home gitlab runner maybe gitlab runner and gitlab no just enter and here whether cell or what do you exactly s h e l l cell and view and it is successfully run okay now this is let's see if it is registered to our gitlab server or not i just refreshed it and you see here this is now my home gitlab runner it is registered here right whatever name i gave in my local system it is local registration right next let's see let's do our pipeline now oh, one second uh, why, why did you exactly register the token uh, it will ask if you go execute it if you see here please enter in the second stage it asks me please enter the gitlab token for this runner right got it got it maybe because of the slowness i couldn't get it i got no, it no, that's okay so once you do that let's uh, run because we have already java installed and we have maven also installed and our pipeline tells uh, let's see what is our uh, repository uh, is if you see here there are three stages uh, one is the build test and deploy i'll i'll tell this one next time maybe um, but let's run it quickly to see if it is run okay uh, using the go to pipeline here and just 
run the pipeline. And in the I want to run in the maybe from the dev branch, let's see, run the pipeline. What is true only? I think this is wrong, something cancel or no, something I facilitates the different code in the dev. We didn't merge it, maybe. So let me run it from um, master. Okay, let me run it from master. Yep, grid test and deploy. Okay. <clears throat> now go to build. If it's at if Maven, uh, okay, it is still it's waiting. Let's see why it is waiting. Okay, there is a way to make it uh, check why it is waiting is you go to runner and here go to the edit and make it indicate whether the pick of jobs without tag. Just sometimes it wait for the tag and just save the changes. Uh, what, if, what happened? This list cannot be empty when CACD runner. Possibly it is already executing, that's why it is not doing. Let's see if it is already executing. So still pending. Why? No, it's pending. Runner. Tag list cannot be empty when runner is not allowed to pick on tag. No, it's okay. So okay, I am doing other way rather. So it I am ask I I is rather I am asking it to pick up on tag because I didn't tag it, indicate whether this runner can pick up jobs without tags. Yes, it should. Then it's only pipeline trigger. When runner is locked, it cannot be assigned to other projects. So let me take this out. Let's see. Okay, now it is running. It took some time, I think, for, okay, now it is running. And okay, build and test both are over already. You saw that? So it executed build success, right? So, and it executed the Maven command and everything is done. And test is also done. Test is also executed properly. You see this Spring Boot? So it is executed properly. And now it is running the build actually deploy also. It is also deployed, I believe. Yes. So now it is running. So just to check it for the if it is really running or not. And we saw that what is the port number? Repository files. What is the port number? We can see if it actually running, we should be able to see that, right? Um, sorry. I think it was eight zero nine zero. 80, no, uh, I think I changed it. 8080, okay. So, so here, um, IP address of my machine is 192.168.1.121.8080. Okay, there is a problem here, and by default, always in every machine, there will be a firewall daemon will be running. Okay, so firewall, you have to uh, allow the or disable the firewall. So sudo system ctl stop firewall d. Okay, hopefully now it's, I stop the firewall. If I do it again, and it is last demo. Sorry. 
So now uh, from my GitLab repository, I could deploy an application. Maybe this is a small one, uh, just one line application, but I could deploy it, right? Login also, I think there is another we created. This is a login page, right? We created this application. We built it, we tested it, like in a pipeline. We saw it, right? So if you go to what it did is it built, it tested and it deployed also. And where it did deploy? Obviously it is a small one. It have one machine only, it's where it can execute. That's why it is executing in my, in my local machine. But always this can be anywhere. And we can give different, different machines also for testing, build and test, and we can deploy to somebody else. And we can change the code in the pipeline and pipeline is obviously the whatever you are writing here right this is a script because we have just executed the script this one and this can be even if you can do ssh here itself and you can even in fact execute the whole script itself so that script will log into some other machine or you want to log into a remote machine you want to push your code there then run it there and you can do anything you want because basically it is executing a script so typically this is the pipeline and we'll see about the pipeline next and uh, uh, next uh, next class and we'll see also how the same thing today we, we didn't use docker right we'll see how docker can be used in a better way because we don't want to install everything and create it what i did is i I install Java, I install Maven so that it can execute, right? But I don't want to do anything. I simple and simply I want to execute my job with the help of container. So because I want to download a container or the image container and execute there itself. So that is also possible and it makes life simpler. So that we'll see next time. Also, we'll as I uh, unfortunately today we don't have time. So we'll also go through uh, some of the basics of virtual machine and some of the basics of uh, application stack in the Docker container environment. We'll explain, I'll try to explain what, how the container from a, one container communicates to another container also, so what is the path it takes. Suppose, I'll, ex I'll obviously explain in much more details next time. So if you want to container in another network, how the container communicates through the network, everything I'll discuss maybe in the next class. Okay, so I think it is already 9.10, uh, but uh, we'll stop here. And uh, we had some difficulties, but uh, uh, well, uh, we'll see that. I, I, some, I think uh, my Zoom is giving me problem sometimes. Uh, anything else? No. Okay. Um, thank you for everyone for joining. Thank you. See you, thank you. next class. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you.